he's feeling it. Look out! From the heavens! Oh, no! Cannon- Welcome back to So You're Interested In, the show where I break down an artist's discography in order to give you, the viewer, the best possible jumping off point in order to get into the catalog. And on this episode, we are going to be looking at the Philly Shoegaze outfit, Nothing. No, like, that's their actual name. I'm, I'm not making a video about actually Nothing because that, that would be stupid. Nothing is led by frontman Nicky Palermo, who is an interesting character in his own right. This group has released a handful of albums, EPs, and singles since their inception in the early 2010s. Their unique blend of dream pop and shoegaze have garnered them a lot of attention throughout the years. So, to make sure you stay in the loop and don't look like a poser, I'll be showing you two albums and three individual tracks that I think you should be listening to if you want to get into nothing. A tradition as old as time itself, let's start with the albums. The first Nothing album to listen to is their 2016 record, Tired of Tomorrow. Tired of Tomorrow sees Nothing try their hand in all things shoegaze, making tracks that sound borderline 90s alternative rock and other ones that are just straight up dream pop. Vertigo Flowers is the first track to really pay attention to as it is a standout song. A much faster tempo in comparison to the rest of the album, along with Palermo's inviting vocal cadence, makes Vertigo Flowers one of the best starting points for New Nothing fans. Next, Curse of the Sun finds the group in their normal form, with crooning fuzzy instrumentals and nearly whispered vocals. The guitar and bass work are freaking fantastic, feeling reminiscent of some major 90s alternative rock songs with a more modern and fresh sound. Finally, Our Plague shows the more melodic and swaying side of nothing. The guitar is pretty and flowery while the drums lightly tap along in the background, but in reality it is the vocal flow that really drives this track. Tired of Tomorrow is not the best Nothing album, at least in my humble opinion, but it does serve as a wonderful taste tester for those looking to dive right into Nothing's discography. Next up, you gotta hear their 2020 release, The Great Disney. This is one of Nothing's most focused projects, as it feels complete and whole with its own identity and self-awareness. Kicking things off is April Haha. Ha. Within the first few notes, you are instantly thrown into heavy, slushing guitar slashes that are subsequently complemented by a much smoother, slower guitar riff that sounds like hot metal being bent. More than anything, April Haha ha is dynamic as hell. Then you get Famine Asylum. The drums on this track are to die for, sounding as crisp as they do raw, while this pickup and letdown rhythm between the guitar and bass are energizing, keeping you on your toes. Lastly, you gotta listen to Ask the Rust. The amount of weight that the song is able to hold is remarkable, with guitars battling between crushing defeats and elegant strokes. Definitely an unbelievable closing track. There's obviously a reason that I ranked The Great Dismal 13th on my favorite records of 2020 list, so I highly recommend giving it a solid listen. And now, we move into Track Town. The first track to hear from Nothing is Blue Line Baby from their 2018 record, Dance on the Blacktop. Right off the bat, you can feel the heaviness within the instrumental with the long guitar pulls and blurry bass notes. Palermo's vocals are as full as ever, but you can tell by his voice that things just don't seem right, and in the context of the lyrics, things most certainly are not right. The song is about kids and young people's loss of innocence during the 90s in North Philadelphia as the opioid crisis skyrocketed. A very powerful song, Blue Line Baby is a must listen. After Blue Line Baby, you should be checking out Somersault from their 2014 Team record Guilty of Everything. A very atmospheric and ethereal experience, Somersault is the complete shoegaze package. The swirling soundscape that feels majestic and cinematic is overwhelming, even taking over the crashing cymbals and pounding kick drums. Not to mention the build-up and breakdown at the end of the song would have even some of the biggest hardcore bands quake before it. I wouldn't call it a hit, but I do see it as a necessary listen in order to break through to the other side of Nothing's expansive discography. Finally, you gotta listen to July the 4th, which was released on a split single with Word. God damn, this song is noisy and heavy. So much so that Palermo's vocals actually reach a straining point in comparison to his usually whispered performance. Everything about July 4th, in terms of the instrumental at least, is boastful and proud, especially when put up against their other tracks. It feels much more rooted in garage rock and sludge metal, but it's an experiment that definitely pays off. Be sure to hear July the 4th. All right, and that's it. I have nothing else to say about nothing. You see what I did there? I know, I know. You do not come here for comedy. I, I totally get that. But what you do come here for are the suggestions suggestions that I gave you, which are all linked in the description box below. If or when you end up listening to them, you can always leave a comment below and let me know what you liked and didn't like. Maybe you dug even deeper and found a song that you thought would have fit better or even an album. Or maybe you're lonely and want to talk to a friend and, you know, hit me up in the comments and I'll, uh, I'll, I guess I'll reply. You can also suggest artists or bands that you would like to see covered on this show. I'm definitely ahead of things right now, so you might not see them soon, but I guarantee you that I take all of the suggestions into consideration. Be sure to subscribe for more videos just like this every single 
Wednesday along with the occasional video on Monday. And for the other show that I do, Forever Spinning, which is basically a video history essay on a classic album, I just put out a video on the first live album that we've ever done. I say we because I didn't make it, my buddy Tim did. It's on the Wolfpack Live at Madison Square Garden, so definitely go check that out. So yeah, that is it. Go listen to Nothing, Wear a Mask When You're Outside, support your local artists and record stores in your area, and I'll end this video just like I end every other video where I say, happy listening.